Hi, uh, welcome to the Nyack Library's workshop, Take Photos Like a Pro with Your iPhone. Our presenter today is Richard Laird. Richard is a professional photographer with over 30 years of experience in New York City. To see examples of his work, please go to Instagram and search for richard.laird566. Please also follow the Nyack Library on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our website to find out about upcoming programs and reopening plans that we have. Okay, Richard. Uh, thanks, Rosemary. And uh, thank you so much for showing up for this class today. And uh, thanks uh, for Nyack Library for setting up the class. And uh, so an hour from now, hopefully, you're um, Photography will never be the same, right? This is going to change the way you view photography on your phone. So, uh, uh, Rosemary introduced me, and uh, yes, I was a, a professional in New York for over 30 years. And uh, around, I guess it was around uh, three, three, four years ago, uh, I bought a larger uh, iPhone. I've been using the 5, which is actually quite small. And uh, it was a seven plus, actually. And it immediately changed everything. I just basically put my uh, professional cameras in the bag. And since then, I've pretty much uh, used only the iPhone. I've even done a couple of uh, assignments in New York with it that worked out quite well. So, uh, to get us started, we can, before we get into the camera, we're going to look at a few pictures uh, so that you can get some idea of the potentials for your iPhone. None of this work was done in Photoshop. It's, uh, it's all done on the phone uh, with various apps, uh, mostly Snapseed, which we'll talk about later. So let's go and have a look at a few pictures. So we'll start off with a few portraits. And um, so this is the kind of, you know, slightly altered colors, perspective, you know, the viewpoint, where did you shoot it from? Uh, you know, there's so many ways to shoot portraits. And uh, let me go to some others so you can see. Um, Now, this is just a grab shot in a living room, you know, but it was edited afterwards. In other words, I improved the sharpness, the color, made the background a little softer, you know. So it, every photo I do gets edited, pretty much everything. You know, I rarely just use a picture straight out of the camera. Um, here's another one using just using garden light there's no there's no um, other lighting than a garden light but there is a reflector underneath her lighting her face a bit but just natural light you know natural light is generally the best if you can find it so let's go to a couple of scenic shots now that are not uh, portraits to give you some idea of some of the potentials uh, let's see. Um, okay, here's a nice one. This is done on a, a very, very foggy day on the Maronet Beach in Westchester. Uh, Rye Beach, rather. Rye Beach. And I just love the, the... The line was actually close to that. Of course, I did add my little painterly filters, which we'll talk about at some point. And uh, that was pretty much the way it looked that day, which is really quite magical. Uh, here's a place you might recognize. This is uh, the main street of Tarrytown uh, during the month of February, when we could still travel there. And, you know, uh, there's a filter that, that I use to make that, but that's pretty much the way it was. I mean, the clouds were really there. That little red car that was really interesting was there. 
course, it didn't look like that. And then also on Tarrytown Main Street, I, I kind of like this, uh, the formation of the building is just the way the colors interacted, you know, with the flag, it made a nice little sort of postcardy type scene, you know, painterly looking, you know. So those are some of the potentials, you know, here's another one too, on, this is also on at Rye Playland, right on the beach at Rye Playland. You know, just they're just grab moments, but you know, if you if you wait long enough and you keep your eyes open, you can get these lovely uh, compositions. You know, where red is a, is a key color there, and the way the people are lined up, and then there's the woman with the child walking away, and Ferris wheel in the background. You know, it's all a kind of a story. It's kind of a story. You know, we're telling a story. Okay, so with that, we're going to start in on the uh, camera, okay? So we're going to uh, change the screen share now. I'm going to stop sharing this. And I'm going to go to screen share the iPhone. Okay, just give me a moment here. Hmm. And there we go. And there's the camera. Everybody see that? Is that uh, clear for everybody? Audio is good. No distortion. Okay, good. So this is the screen of the uh, 11 Pro camera. Now, um, I don't know what cameras that everybody has, but most of what we're going to talk about today will apply to everything pretty much from seven up to 11. Uh, although um, the uh, Earlier models don't have the portrait lens. You see this, this uh, lens here, it says portrait. Um, so we'll talk about that later, but we're going to cover everything on the screen, all these little things, what they mean, how to use them, etc. But the first thing we're going to do, we're going to talk about is um, one of the main things that when we say professional photography, uh, one of the things everyone expects it to be is sharp. In other words, you can't have blurry photographs. If people are paying you a fee to produce pictures, they have to be sharp, right? So one of the ways that with the iPhone that could really help you to make sharp pictures is the way you hold it. So I'm going to show you something now. I'm going to put it right up on the, on the camera. You see this? Uh, all right. It's called a pop socket. You can press it in and it goes flat like that. And then you pull it out and you hold the camera like that. I mean, it really is amazing. I mean, you, you can put it any angle you want, you know, but the main thing is when you're shooting with your other finger, you can hold it very, very steady when you press to take a photo. You see what I mean? You do it that way, any way you like, up, down, right? The point is to be stable, right? Because if you're holding it like this, you know, it's very, it's difficult to get it stable, right? You're afraid of dropping it. This is very secure. You're not going to drop it, okay? So that's what that is, okay? So they're very inexpensive. They're called uh, pop sockets. You can get them on Amazon. You can get them at, uh, I think, uh, Verizon, T-Mobile have them in the store too, but better online so you don't have to go anywhere to get it. So you'll notice on the screen that we're looking at here, there's some uh, vertical and horizontal light gray lines, right? 
these things here, right? These lines. Um, I, you probably don't have them on your camera, right? Chances are you won't because they're kind of hidden somewhere. They're not in the camera. So they're very, very important because they help you to line up your pictures. You know, if you're shooting a, a lovely seascape, you know, with the horizon, you don't want it to be crooked in the photo because that looks weird, right? So things like this help you to make a nice straight line and help you make your compositions a little more precise. So let's talk about how we get there. Okay, so um, turn your camera off by sliding your finger up from the bottom. I'll show you that again. Just slide your finger up, turn the camera off, slide across here and find settings settings okay when you open that screen we're going to scroll down till we see the word camera we're going to open camera okay up in the top here see it says grid make sure it's turned on that the green light is on okay that's all we need to do there. And down the bottom, if you have the, I believe it's the 10 up to the 11 Pro, on the bottom it says Smart HDR. Make sure that's turned on also. And you can leave these things on permanently, that's it. Okay, everyone good on that? So just to go over that quickly again, we went to the settings menu, we scroll down till we found camera, we open that, we turn the grid on, we slid down to the end of the page and made sure smart high dynamic range, that's what that means, high dynamic range, okay? Okay, so we're gonna get out of that, go back to your page, scroll, back to your camera, and there's your grid. Okay, everyone got that? Uh, you can review the video if you have to, you know, to, to, if you didn't get that, but it's a very simple process, right? And it stays there permanently. Once you put it there, that's it, it's not going away, okay? So, two things that you immediately have to do if you're a professional is, in order to get the picture sharp, you have to focus it. And you say, well, how do you do that on a phone? You don't have a lens. You're not gonna be you know, turning the lens to make it sharp or blurry, right? You, you don't have a lens on the phone, so how do you make it sharp? Well, let's have a look at how we make it sharp. Okay, just keep your eye on the screen here, okay? I'm gonna put my finger and press. You see that? It started off with a little square like that. You see that little square with a little sunlight next to it? Like that. That's how you make it sharp. And you can make it sharp anywhere on the screen. It doesn't have to be dead center. Maybe you want something over here sharp, right? But let's go for the center. Okay, so now we're putting our finger right on the screen. Just touch it like that and press. Okay. Now you have to hold it and you will get on the top that little window. It says automatic exposure, automatic focus lock. When you see that, the picture that you're taking is now sharp. Okay. Let's go over that again. You know, let's, let's point actually at something here. I'm gonna just use this as a model for practice. And by the way, to go in and out like I'm doing with the, the focus like this, right? I'm using my fingers to just slide back and forth like a little, like a crab, right? Like a crab claw. And so you can zoom in and out that's all the way out, and that's in. 
So let's practice focusing here. So there's your picture, right? Now you want to make it sharp. You put your finger right on it and press. And now that picture is sharp. Okay. Now you, you don't care about the background. You only care about what's there. To turn it off, by the way, you just touch the screen again. To turn it back on again, it's like that. Okay. So now we have the picture sharp, but it's too dark. So the next thing we need to learn is how do we make the exposure different? Because that's the second most important thing with the profession of a picture. The exposure has to be right. It can't be too sharp, can't be too light. It has to be just right. Okay. So how do we do that? Well, after we've focused, is everyone able to hear me okay? Because I'm turning away a bit here. Uh, after you have focus with your finger like that, you've got it sharp. Now you simply slide your finger up from the bottom of the screen, okay? Like this, just slide it up the screen and it'll make the picture lighter or darker is down, lighter is up. You see the little sun moving up and down the box? You can put your, put your finger anywhere on the screen. It doesn't have to be dead center or anything. And then you'll get it where you think it's about right. In this case, it's too light in the background, but you get the idea. I'm just demonstrating here how to make it lighter or darker. All right. The camera has to catch up a bit. It takes a while sometimes. There we go. Okay, there we go, now we're back. Okay, so that's sharpness with your finger pressed till you see the box at the top show up. The camera's taking a while to catch up here. There you go. Okay, so again, you touch it to get rid of it, and then you touch it again to refocus, okay? And to make it sharp, you're going to slide your finger from the bottom up to make it lighter and slide your finger down the screen to make it darker, okay? So that's focus and exposure. So now we have the grid, we have focus, we have exposure. The next thing we're going to talk about is framing. So what do we mean by framing? Well, you can frame your photograph lots of different ways. You can shoot your camera that way, which is horizontal, or you can shoot it that way, which is vertical. You can also shoot it square. If you like to shoot square, you'll notice that on Instagram, lots of the photos are square, so it's very popular there. It's a nice shape, okay? So how do we change the framing, all right? So, now this will apply differently on the iPhone 11 than the earlier models, but everyone has the same information. It's just accessed a little different, okay? For our, excuse me, an email just showed up on my screen. Good, thank you. Um, yes, so it's accessed differently on the 11 then say from the seven or the six. So you'll notice up here on the 11, there's a little sort of a gray arrow. I'm gonna to touch that. Now, you'll notice that a different menu showed up down here. You see, let me do that again. We're gonna to touch this little arrow up here. All right. And that's where we, we started. And now I'm gonna to touch it again. And you get this menu down the bottom. So we're gonna talk about each one of these little symbols. That's where we're going next, okay? So the first one we're going to look at is framing, which we call cropping for photography. How do you crop the photograph? In other words, here you have the option when you touch this, uh, if you're following along, I'll give you a minute. 
questions to make sure you've got this. Now, on the, I believe on the 10 down to the 7, it'll actually say square down the bottom. You don't have to do this move. But on the 11, this is how you get a square. You press on the 4, 3, and this little window opens, and you see the word square. And now your frame is a square. You see? I'm, I have to move slowly with this camera because. Uh, the video can't keep up with it if I move too fast. So we have a square frame. Now if we want a different frame. All we have to do is select the different options here. A 16 by 9. Let me see how that looks. That, that's like a very wide rectangle. So yeah, the camera can't keep, uh, keep up with um, Zoom. Or zoom can keep up with the cameras, but I need to move slowly. Uh, so basically, that's what this 4-3 is. You press it to get square or the 16-9 option, okay? So next, we're going to look at these little symbols starting over here on the left, right over here, above this picture, right here. So that's the camera's flash, okay? That's the flash. And uh, I hardly ever use it. It's not particularly flattering. I mean, it's there. It's useful if you absolutely need some light. But I rarely use it, to be honest, right? The next one is called, this doesn't exist in uh, earlier models. It's only in the 11, right? It's called night mode. And it's absolutely amazing. If you have this phone, uh, go out later when it gets dark and maybe on the street where you live and just take a shot at night. You have to have some lights, like street lights or whatever. But you'll be amazed at the photographs you can take with that little kind of half moon thingy there. Okay. Now the third one, in this little circle with lines through it, the line through it, that's called live mode, live mode. And it, it lives up here on the top, too. You see on the upper um, right corner? It's called live mode. Uh, when you turn that on, it takes a little miniature video. It's like a little tiny video that lasts, you know, two seconds, right? And it has a little bit of movement in it. But uh, I, I never use it. I don't see any particular use for it with the photos I like to do. But it's kind of useful. Some people like it. I, I don't use it. Okay, the next one is over here. The second one from the right. It's a little clock. Uh, this is a very, very useful tool. Okay, so let's turn the clock on. Now you just turn it on by touching it. Okay, that little clock thing. Just press on it and it opens, right? Now the camera, the clock lives in different places on models, uh, less than 11, but it's there on every phone. You can find it if you look on your uh, screen, you'll find the clock. Now the options are timer off or timer on. You can do a three second timing or a 10 second. So we're going to do a 10 second timer. Now, why would you use this? Well, this is a very, very useful idea because for example, let's say you want to do a, a family group shot and you've got 10 people and you want to be in the shop too, right? You set the camera up maybe on a shelf or on a table, make sure it's properly propped up, uh, make the frame you want, you know, get everyone in the place you want them to be, set the camera up, make sure it's steady, right? And when you've got everyone set up, you hit the timer, Right, you hit the uh, sorry, you hit the 10 second, you hit the shutter, you're ready to three go. Right now, at meantime, you're running over and you're in the picture now, you're right there, and there you go. It just took the picture, okay? So, that's what the timer does, very, very useful. I'm going to turn that off now. Let me see, back to there. 
Okay, timer off. Okay, everyone got that? How we access the timer, you just press the clock. You pick your three seconds or 10 seconds, right? And uh, very useful too. I'm sure you'll all find a way to use that. All right, so timer off. Now the last one we're going to look at is this little uh, signature here. What it is, is filters, all right? These are filters. Now you need a picture up, let me see if I can, uh, Bring a picture up. Okay, so we have a picture up. Now, the original, it says original, but as you slide your finger along, notice how the picture changes. It's a different filter. All right. You keep going, it becomes, and it tells you what the style of the picture is. Vivid cool, you see the difference there. Vivid, vivid warm, that's sort of a warmer tone, cooler tone. I'm just sliding my finger along these things, dramatic, dramatic warm, dramatic cool. And now what's really nice is you can, you can also do black and white with this filter. Now you can leave the filter on and you can actually do your photography in black and white if you'd like to. Or you can make the pictures black and white after you shoot them, right? But you can't necessarily make the black and white color. You have to shoot the color first if you want color, okay? So that's the filters and that lives, I'm gonna cancel out on that, go back to the camera, right? Shut my lens off. And there's your filters. They live down here on the 11. I believe they live up, you know, they live down here also, I think on the 10 and the seven, right? Now to close down that little window there, again, you just click that button up in the top, right? And you go back to that window, right? Now you can, the only two modes we're gonna work on, by the way, are photo and portrait, all right? We're not going to do panorama. We're not going to do video. We're just going to do photo and portrait. As I said, uh, I believe the portrait is on the seven plus and the eight and all the others up to the 11, but I don't think it's on the seven or anything lower than that. The portrait lens is, is fabulous, fabulous lens. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention too, uh, before I forget, is make sure your phone is updated. Make sure you have the latest version of the phone's operating system. Uh, they generally do it automatically, but it's a good idea if you haven't done it for a while to do that because uh, every now and then they'll make some changes in the camera, like improvements of different kinds. So it's good to have the latest operating system on your phone, okay? So, the next thing we're going to look at now is editing a photo, editing a photo, okay? How do we get to edit, all right? Well, you have to have a photo first, all right? You have to have a photo to work with. So let me see what I'm doing here. I don't want video. Let me take a quick photo. I'm going to edit it. So again, I'm getting it sharp, and now I'm getting it a bit lighter. Now I'm going to take the photo. All right. Now, in order to edit, you have to have a photo in your window down here, okay? So you touch that with your finger, and that brings up, oh, sorry, I need to shut that. That brings up this, okay? Let's do that again. Go back to the camera. You take a photo, it can be any photo you like, just take something in the room where you are, anything at all. 
uh, person or thing, whatever. You put your finger on that picture and now your editing window opens. Now you won't see it on this screen, but the bottom of your screen should say edit, right? Do that again, edit. And when you press edit, this is the window that shows up. Let's do that again. So everyone's clear on it. We go all the way back to the camera. We took a picture. The picture is right here on the lower corner. Touch that, and it opens this window. And down the bottom where you see the word edit, press that. Okay? So we're going to look at these items now. All right? Now, uh, you'll notice that the first one here, live picture, doesn't have a line through it. That means it's on. We don't want it to be on. Okay? So we're not going to use that. The ones we are going to use are this one here. We did this one already. If this is the second place it shows up. And this is very nice because it means you can apply the filters after you've taken a photo, not while you're doing it, you see. You know, you come back from someplace, you took some nice pictures, and you think, oh, I'd like to see them with some filters. And now you can do it right here, okay? Uh, the most important window in here, by far, <laughs> is this one here, this little uh, geometry-looking thing. This is the crop tool. This is the crop tool. <laughs> it's another word for framing. Cropping, framing, cropping, okay? So we're going to press on that little window, right? And this window comes up. This is the crop window, okay? Framing window. Let's go back and do that again. Cancel, edit, crop tool. Do that again. All right? Open picture. Edit, crop tool. Now, I'm looking at the picture. Well, I think the table is too long. So watch now. I'm going to watch the bottom left and right corner. See, I'm just going to slide it up to where I think I'd like it to be, right? Maybe about there. And I think, oh, it's a little too high on the top also. So look, watch the, those top little triangles on the corner. Watch that. Let's see. Maybe a little bit closer on that side. You want to slide the side. You can make it any shape you want, right? Obviously not a circle, but you can make it any kind of a rectangle or a square. So let's say uh, I like that. Okay. So you hit done, and there you are, right? That's the crumb. So it kind of zoomed in on the photo. So let's go back and do some more editing now. All right. So what else can we do? Well, it's kind of dark. You know, the background is good. Of course, it's very bright on the side, but it's still kind of dark. So let's go to the next level tool. This one here. You see, this is like a little wand with some stardust on it, I guess, right? So you hit on that. Now you have this slider down the bottom here. So the way this works is you just put your finger on it and slide it back and forth and look what happens with the photo. It gets darker and it gets lighter, right? So you can gauge the way you want. That's way too dark. That, that little white dot, by the way, is where you started. That's, that's when you took the picture. That's how it was. Now you're making it brighter. Maybe about that much. All right. So what does the next little button do? Let's see this one here. Well, it does pretty much the same thing. Exposure is just a different word. This one gives you even more brightness, way too much. Now, obviously, you don't want that much, right? You just want maybe that much, you know? Maybe that much, all right? what about the next one? 
This one does highlights. Let's see what happens when you, we move that around. Well, it makes the highlights brighter or darker, but it doesn't really help a whole lot. The next one, contrast. Contrast is a very important one because most of the pictures that come out of the camera are too flat, right? Or too flat. They need to be a little more crisp. And that's what contrast does. But it's not always applicable to every picture as a strong tool, just a little bit. In this case, it seems to look better less than more, right? In other words, there's the white dot. And if you move it to the left, it's actually better a little bit. So maybe there. Okay. Now the next one over here. Brightness. Well, brightness is the same as exposure, isn't it? Brightness does the same thing as exposure. It's just another word. So we don't need much of anything there. The next one is called black point, which is really the same as the little white dot. It's telling you that's that's where we are now, right? Saturation is important, especially with color, because saturation, again, most of the pictures that come out of the camera are a little flat. The colors are a little muted. And I guess they do that on purpose, the, the engineers who put it together. But most pictures need a little bit more saturation. So let's see what happens when we slide it up. Look at the colors on the table, that blue thing that's showing up. I mean, it's a little weird. I wouldn't go that far, but uh, there's your white dot start. So maybe just a little bit. You can see those blue pens look a little bluer. Maybe just a little bit. Vibrance. Vibrance basically does essentially the same thing. It, it kind of pops the colors a bit. The background's difficult today because it's too sunny outside. But uh, for this kind of picture, but so these tools, this one, I hardly, I don't know, uh, warmth is just makes the picture more orangey, which is usually not necessary unless it's a very, very cold overcast day, then the, the light might be a bit blue, so you might want to add a bit of orange, but I generally don't do much of that. I don't do anything with tint. Sharpness is important. Uh, because you can see, by the way, doing this on your photo, as I said, is done with two fingers like that. That's all you do to zoom in and out. You're just, you're just squeezing on the screen up and down like that. Right? It's a very fast way to uh, get the frame you want. Right? But of course, the other thing that that I'm always telling people is generally speaking, especially if you're going to do uh, pictures of people's faces, portraits, is move in closer. Everyone shoots from too far away, right? This is about right on the screen. That's about as, you know, it's about right for your portrait. You don't want to be like 10 feet away, you know. But again, you don't want to be in their face either. But, uh, you know, maybe six to eight feet. Nothing further away than that. Okay, so definition. That's the same thing as sharpness, pretty much. But there is a subtle change. Let's see what happens when we slide the, the slider. Yeah, I suppose there's a subtle change in the, in the edge of the sharpness up in the top there, right? Okay, so the last one then is vignette, which is a very nice tool. What that does... Watch the four corners of the picture, you see? It basically darkens the outside four corners. And again, I'm just sliding my finger back and forth. But it's a very nice look. It's very, very popular with, uh, you know, portrait photographers. And it started in France in the early 19th century. That those photographers who basically started photography did it this with their pictures all the time, made the corners a little darker. It's a nice look, okay? You can make it as much or a little as you want. About that much would be good. So if you like that, 
everything's good, you go, done. All right. And now you have your picture. Okay, so that's, you know, it's quite a lot different than when we started, right? Uh, let me just. So I hope yeah, everyone got what we went through there. We may run it through it again quickly. This one <clears throat> is a quick automatic fix, this one. That's the picture when we started. That's the picture when we started, right? Oh, you know, dark and the color was not so great, right? And then we began to operate that little one. That just basically is a very quick kind of auto thing. That little one thing. It, it's not particularly useful. The really the place to start is really on exposure. That's where you would really start if it's if it needs exposure. Some pictures won't, of course, right? Some pictures won't. Um, so we went through all the different ways you can change the exposure, you can change the brilliance. So you can practice in these things. Again, you, the problem with this one, I need to tell you this in advance, is uh, now most of your pictures will be saved in, um, let me find the app. They'll probably be saved in Google Photos, right? Which is uh, over here. And there's also photos, but I think in Google Photos, pretty much every photo you've ever taken will show up there. But um, my point is that the, the editing uh, here that we're doing is destructive editing. In other words, if you do something and you change it, once you change something, you'll see the word done down here. Once you press that button, you can't go backwards again because it's, you know whatever changes you made to the picture are permanently gone, right? Now, as I said, you might be able to find the picture before you edit it in uh, Google Photos, but you want to check that out before you do this. So what I recommend for everybody is, and that's going to be the subject of our next class, which is on the... Uh, July 8th, uh, Wednesday, July 8th at two o'clock. We're going to be doing a follow-up Zoom class uh, to get into the app that I believe is the best editing app out there. It's called Snapseed. And I'll show you that app here. We're not gonna work with it today, but there's Snapseed right here, this uh, little emblem down here when you're when you turn it on, it looks like this. Right? And then you simply open a photo. We're not going to get into that today, but uh, if you if you plan on coming next Tuesday, and I hope you do, because you know the editing, uh, you know the the more um, artistic editing really uh, offers you the opportunity to turn your pictures into something really extraordinary, right? And without you know. Yes, it does take some work. You have to you have to put the time in. But again, um, it's it's an amazingly satisfying process to see what you can do, right? So I recommend uh, download Snapseed if you plan to come because we're going to be using it right from the beginning next week. And uh, I would really suggest practicing everything we did today. Practice. You know, it takes a while to get used to. Um, thinking about, oh, do I need to make it sharper? And knowing what to do to do that. Or oh, at least it seems a bit dark, we need to make it lighter, exposure. So practice all the things we learned. Uh, practice shooting, not, you know, a lot of people tend to shoot horizontally all the time, right? That they don't normally shoot like that. But some of the nicest frames happen that way, right? Um, and then try uh, shooting a, with squares instead of rectangles. That's also very nice. And, uh, you know, the weather is beautiful right now. I mean, uh, you know, if you're, if you're fortunate enough to live somewhere where you can walk, 
every day since most of us are locked down. Uh, you know, go out for a walk with your camera, take it with you every time you go. Um, best time of day, obviously, is the early morning sunlight is beautiful this time of the year, and also the early evening light is beautiful, right? Those are midday is a little tough. It's very doesn't mean you can't take photos. It's a bit harsh though, you know, a bit harsh. So um, bring the camera with you and take photos and practice what we've been teaching here. You know, make them lighter, make them darker, make them smaller, you know, try different things. Uh, use the grid to make things straighter, right? Like we, like we said, you know, this white grid. And uh, practice, again, practice. It takes a while to get used to how hard you need to press to get that to show up, right? Again, you just touch it to get rid of it and press a little bit, not too hard, get that, right? Now let's take a quick look at the portrait lens while we still have a bit of time left. We didn't cover that today. It's a magnificent lens. I mean, as a, as a portrait photographer, which is what I did for many years, you know, I had very specialized lenses that made the background very, very soft and beautiful, so the face was featured, right? So that's what this lens does. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a face here to work on, but let's work on our little uh, subject over here, okay? So I have the portrait lens turned on, okay? Now, with the portrait lens, uh, you can't zoom with your crab fingers, right? It's a fixed lens, so you have to move in or out with the camera. You know, you have to move it in and out until you find the frame you like. So maybe uh, about there, about there. Now again, the first thing we're going to do is make a chart. Okay, and there we go. It's still a bit dark, so let's lighten it up a bit. And about there, it's okay. Now, you see this where it says natural light? You put your finger on that, and hold it, it'll open up a whole menu of things and you just slide back and forth till you see them all, right? I'm just sliding my finger back and forth on that, right? And it gives you different options. So that's natural light. That's called studio light, contour light. And this one is really amazing. This is stage light. Let's take a shot of that. It may work. Okay. You see what it does? It blocks out everything around the picture that keeps the picture light, which is really amazing. So let's go back there. So we have stage light in black and white as well, mono, as well as color, right? And then you've got high key light. Let's take a shot of that. That does the opposite. It makes the background completely disappear. I mean, you'd have to practice shots like this to make them, you know, look great the first few times. So let's go back to natural light and work on this photo with just natural light. Okay. And again, you want to you want to check the focus always. And the, and the exposure always. Now bear in mind that photos that are too light are harder to fix than photos that are too dark. If the photo is too light, it's very difficult to bring the detail back. But if it's a bit dark, you can still bring the detail up. So I tend to slightly dark is better. So let's look at this and imagine that this is a face, right? But you know, it's a beautiful lens for other things too. I take pictures of flowers with it. Uh, you could take, certainly take portraits of your animals. A cat's face would be perfect, you know. But let's imagine it's a face or a flower, right? Again, you always want to make sure you're sharp and exposed. So now here's a little trick. On the upper right, you see the little F. You want to touch that. Now you see what happened down the bottom? 
under the photo. We've got this little slider. Now this means F stop. That's that F means F stop, which is photography means how wide open the lens or closed down it is. Right? It's like an eye. Imagine it like an eye that closes and opens. Right? So I want you to watch the background here. Right? Watch what happens as I slide the slider across. The picture stays the same, but everything behind it gets softer. You see that? And you can make it, you can go all the way to the end where there's no softness and all the way back where it's a lot of softness. And so you can make it, you know, wherever you want it to be. And again, you have to continually make sure you're sharp exposed. So let's let's take that shot. So this is almost almost full softness, but not quite. So let's take the shot. Now again, you see the way I'm holding the camera, that's not good. I have this ring on the back. It's a little different than the pop socket, but it does the same thing, right? I should close my lens so you can see it. Yeah, so it's, see it's around my finger like that. That helps me stabilize it. So let's go back to the shot. Everything's good to go. Boom. And there's your shot. Now, again, it's, uh, as I said, it's a little flat for me. So next, next week, we're going to, uh, we're going to edit pictures in Snapseed instead of in the camera, okay? Because the camera, as I said, it's destructive editing. Once you make the changes, you can't go backwards, right? But in Snapseed, you can do whatever you want and uh, you're not affecting the original picture at all. It's a copy of the original. And when you finish working in Snapseed, uh, when you've got everything the way you like it, uh, you, you can save it, save a copy of it, so your original is still the same, and now you have the edited version as well. You can always revert back if you want. So again, uh, download Snapseed if, if you're planning coming next week, and uh, I think that's about it. There's not much more uh, to cover in the camera. That should as I said at the beginning, what we went through today should completely change your photography forever. If you practice, but you do have to practice. So as I said, the weather's beautiful, but it's lovely in the rain too. I mean, it's lovely anytime, as long as there's subjects that you find interesting. It can be all sorts of things. Maybe you'll walk down the road in Nyack and see a beautiful mailbox, you know, something really unusual. Well, make a beautiful portrait of the mailbox using the portrait lens, right? Things like that. Uh, let your imagination run. So I'm going to hand it back to uh, Rosemary now and uh, look forward to seeing you next week. And thanks so much for coming. Thank you, Richard. I'm going to stop the recording.